Hello children. Uh, my name is Paul Washer and uh, I work with the Heart Cry Missionary Society and uh, I'm also a dad and I have, um, I have three little children and I love them very much and one of the greatest goals I have in my life is to teach them the truth, to lead them uh, to Jesus Christ. And um, I desire the same uh, for you. Um, I'm an older man, I'm older than you, and uh, I've learned a few things over the years. The most important thing that I've learned is there's nothing more important than knowing Jesus Christ. There's nothing more important than, than loving Him and serving Him and worshiping Him. Uh, everything in my life that is good is good because of Jesus Christ. And um, why wouldn't I want you to know about a Savior as great as Him? Now we're going to be studying certain questions um, that are very, very good questions, very important, and we're going to be studying what is known as doctrine or truth, the, the truths that we find in Scripture. Now I know that you're young, I know that you're children, but you have a head on your shoulders and in that head uh, you have a brain. And I am convinced that the power of the Word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit can help teach you the things you need to know about God. Also, you have a heart and we hope that, uh, that everything that you learn will make its way down into your heart and that you will be controlled by the love of Jesus Christ. Controlled by how much He loves you and all the good things that He has done for you. Now, we're going to start with our first question. I'm going to read it here. And here's the question. What is the chief end of man? That's a question that was asked a long time ago. And the answer is this. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Now, we've said probably a whole lot of things that you don't really understand right now, but you still needed to hear them, and we're going to try to explain to you what they mean. But some of the verses, Bible verses, that we're going to use in this study, I want to read to you right now, and they're very, very important. We'll read them, and we'll talk about them just a little bit. The first Bible verse that is so important to this study is found in 1 Corinthians 10.31. And this is what it says. It's one of my favorite verses of all time. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. You know, you and I were made by God. And because He made us, He also owns us. And not only has He made us, but He has... He sustains us. And that means that He continues giving us uh, life and breath. For example, if you were to just take in a deep breath right now, who gave that to you? God gave it to you. Do you feel your heart beating in your chest? Who makes it beat? God makes your heart beat. And so how should we live knowing that God made us, God keeps us alive, that God loves us, and especially a truth we're going to discover pretty soon, that God gave His Son to die for everything that we have done wrong. How should we live? Well, we should live for God's glory. We should live to praise Him and to love Him and to talk to Him and walk with Him. He should be the most important person in our life. As a matter of fact, um, He should be our life. Everything we do, look what it says, whether you eat or drink, we can say whether you, um, you play baseball or basketball, you should do it for the glory of God. Uh, when you study in your school, your home school, you should do it for the glory of God. You should obey, obey your, your parents for the glory of God. And uh, you should jump on a trampoline for the glory of God. Everything you do should be for Him, to bring Him joy. And you know what? When you live that way, you will have joy. Now, another verse that is really, really uh, important is Psalms 115.1. Okay? Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to Your name give glory because of Your loving kindness, because of Your truth. Um, have you ever gotten in trouble because you want to be the center of attention? Like maybe there are a lot of grown-ups in the room and all of a sudden you walk in and start making all kinds of noise so that everybody will look at you. 
And the problem is it's only your parents that start looking at you and they're not too happy with what you're doing. Well, that's what this verse is talking about. You shouldn't be a person who wants to draw attention uh, to himself. You shouldn't be, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at how great I am, look at how great I am. That's not the way you should be. As a matter of fact, you won't have many friends living that way. Instead, you should be a person who is constantly saying, look at God, look at God, look at Him, look how wonderful He is, look at all the great things He has done. You know, even when we talk about how much we love God, you know, there are a lot of songs out there that say things like, oh, how I love Jesus. And those are beautiful songs and they're good to sing. But you know what? Um, I don't like to talk a whole lot about how much I love Jesus because um, my love for Jesus is, is not all that great. There's many uh, failures in my life and in my love. I would rather talk about how much Jesus loves me and all the great things Jesus has done for me. And so not only should we do everything uh, for God's joy and God's glory, but we should also be a person who doesn't try to uh, build our lives around ourselves, always thinking about us and always wanting people to look at us and see how great we are. We shouldn't be that way. We should want people to look at us and be reminded of how great and wonderful and beautiful and splendid and everything else that God is. Okay, now another verse is Psalms um, 1611. And boy, if you can learn this one, you'll learn a lot of things that a lot of grown-ups have never learned. And because they've never learned it, they're not truly happy. And this is what it says. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forever. Now this is talking about God. And, and listen to what it says. It says, you will make known to me the path of life. Hey, do you want to be alive? <laughs> I know I do. But I don't want just to be alive. I mean, I want to really be alive. I want to, uh, I want to have joy. I, I want to feel like my life really matters. Do you know where all that comes from? Well, he says, you make known to me the path of life. Only God can teach you how to live. Only God. And if you truly want to be happy, and guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. If you truly want to be happy, if you truly want to live the life you have, it can only be by following Christ, by doing the will of God. Now he says, in your presence is fullness of joy. Um, a lot of you probably think that, you know, go to heaven and you'll be sitting on a cloud and you'll have these funny little angel wings and playing a golden harp and it'll be kind of boring. Well, at least a place like that would be kind of boring for me. Um, but that's not the way it is. Um, God is so beautiful. So beautiful. More beautiful than all the other things you've ever seen that are beautiful. He is so beautiful, so wonderful. He is so great that heaven will be just being in His presence and seeing His beauty and enjoying a relationship with Him. And you say, well, how long will that last? That'll last forever. And you say, well, then how come we won't get bored? I mean, even if I look at myself in the mirror for a few minutes, I get bored. Yeah, but you see, God is, is so great. He's so beautiful that His beauty goes on forever. And you'll never be able to discover all the beauty that He is. The joy that He gives you will just increase and increase and increase and you'll never be able to, uh, to, 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 to run it out or to come to the end of the joy that He'll give you so that life will become boring. No, God is infinite. And that means He just goes on forever. And you and I in heaven will spend all of eternity just trying to discover all the beauty and all the glory and all the power of God. You know, I like, to, uh, I like to travel to strange places and discover things. I like going down dark rivers and climbing mountains and all sorts of things. And my little boys, 
Ian and Evan, uh, they're the same way. They're always drawing treasure maps and wanting to go on adventures. But the greatest adventure, the greatest adventure, and I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not lying to you. The greatest adventure is not climbing the Andes Mountains or looking at the Himalayas or going through the jungle. The greatest adventure is seeing all the beauty of God in the face of Christ. And that's what, that's what we want for you. That's what we want for you. Now, he says, um, in your right hand there are pleasures forever. Yes. You know, um, do you ever go to church and sometimes it seems like um, everything, is, everything is kind of boring? Um, that the sermon's kind of boring and even the songs are kind of boring? and That can mean that something's wrong with you. But it can also mean that something's right for you. Because to be honest with you, sometimes I feel the same way. What I want you to know is, heaven and the presence of God is not necessarily like going to church. I don't want you to just go to church and think, boy, that's the Christian life. It's not. We go to church to worship together, and there should be joy in that. And we go to church to learn the Word of God, and the preacher should preach with power. He should teach us something. But the Christian life is much more than that. We go to church just to learn, just to worship together. But the Christian life is you seeking God. Do you know that nobody, nobody has ever known God as much as God could be known? And do you realize that you could be the person who sets out on a marvelous, fantastic journey to discover just how great God is. It's an amazing, an amazing promise. Now, there's another verse here that is real important to me. It's Psalms 37, 4. And I can say that uh, I've, uh, yeah, uh, I do this um, for the most part. Much of my life's been based on this and, and it's been a great, a great blessing. Psalms 37.4 is, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Um, we should not love God or delight in God because then we think, if I do that, then He'll give me what I really want. No, not at all. That, that's wrong. Um, but if we do delight in God with all our heart and we seek Him and seek to do His will, He's such a good God. He's such a good Father that what He does is He um, sees desires in our heart, maybe even desires that we don't even know about, and He gives them to us. Um, I have served the Lord for many years, and He is the most kind and gracious God. Oh, I've passed through some troubles and some trials, times of great sadness and problems. But I can tell you this, I can testify, children, there is no one like God and no one that will be as good to you as He has already been and as He will be. If you follow Him and He is your heart desire, then He will show you more of who He is. But He will also look in your heart and give you tiny gifts that, that mean a great deal. Let me give you an example. When I was a, a, a little boy, I lived on a farm and didn't travel much, didn't see much of the world except the farm. And, uh, but I always used to watch this television program called Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. It was kind of like Discovery Channel. It had a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of stuff, travels to strange lands and seeing all kinds of wild animals. And, and that's, I, I just watched it all the time. And I just I wanted so much to do that, to go, to go to all those strange places and see all those wild animals and have those kind of adventures. And actually, when I graduated from high school, I, I decided that I was going to try to study to be a lawyer or something like that just so I could make enough money, just so then I could travel and go to all those wild places. I mean, still, it was a desire of my heart. And when I was 21, someone shared the gospel with me. And I realized that if I came to Jesus, that I would have to turn my life over to Him. 
And it really was a struggle for me because I thought, wow, what's he going to do to me? Is he going to take away all my dreams? Is he, uh, you know, all the things I've ever wanted to do, am I going to have to give that up? And the answer was yes. At that moment, um, I needed to make the decision to give it all up, to say, Lord, I'm yours, I'm your slave. Do with me what you will. And so God uh, called me to preach and um, um, also called me to be a missionary. And uh, many times, I, I lived many, many years with, without, with, with very little money. Let's just put it that way. And um, many of the plans I had for my life didn't happen. They didn't happen. And then one day when I was about probably 31 years old, I was uh, going up the Andes Mountains in a mule train. Now that doesn't, it's a, what that is, is you take a whole bunch of mules and you load them down with a whole bunch of stuff and you hike up into the mountains. And I was in one of the most beautiful places in the world, in a, in a thing called a Ceja de Selva, which is an eyebrow of the jungle. It's the high jungle. So it has all the beauty of the low jungle, but it doesn't have the heat or as many insects. And it's beautiful. It's, it's just beautiful. The mountains are all green and there are waterfalls and strange animals and all kinds of things. And I was walking through there and I just began to cry. Do you know why? Because I realized something. When I was 21 and I came to know Christ, I gave to Him all my dreams and desires that I'd had ever since a little boy of having all these fantastic adventures. I gave it all away to follow Him and thought I had lost them forever. But the fact of the matter is, He gave them all back to me. And traveling and preaching and being a missionary in the name of Jesus Christ I have traveled all over the world in mountains and jungles and seen all kinds of wild people and wild animals and all kinds of wonderful experiences. Everything, no, not everything I dreamed of as a child, more than what I dreamed of as a child. Now, I'm just telling you my personal testimony and I don't know how things will work out in your life, but I do know this. You need to give your life and your heart, everything you are to Jesus Christ. And if you do, when you're older like me, uh, you'll be happy you did. You'll be very happy that you did. Now, we said that the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And that's true. But what does it mean, chief end? You know, adults use all these big words that I'm not sure sometimes we even understand what they mean. What does it mean that the chief end of man is to glorify God? Well, let me read something that I have for you. It says, the chief end is the most important reason or purpose for your life. So, what we're saying is this. The most important purpose or the reason for your life, the reason why you were made it's to glorify God. It's to know Him and see how wonderful He is and then live in light of what you know about Him. To serve Him, to obey Him, to do His will. Okay? Now, here's some questions that we need to ask ourselves. It says, The chief end is the most important reason or purpose for your life and it demands that we ask a few questions. Why did God make you? You ever asked yourself that question? I mean... Wow, of all the questions you can ask, I guess that's a pretty big one, isn't it? Why did God make you? Another question. Why are you alive? Why? Is it just to uh, be born and go to school, get a job, and then die? I mean, why are you alive, really? And then another question. What will make you most happy as a human being? What will make you most happy? Have you ever thought about that? And you have to be really careful here because there are a lot of people that will tell you a lot of things. Um, if you buy this toy, you'll be happy. If you get this bike, you'll be happy. But you know as well as I do that you get that toy and then you're not happy anymore. Or you get that new bike and it's, you're happy for a few days, but then maybe you want another bike. And if you don't get that bike, you won't be happy. So what will really make you happy? I mean, that, 
That's an important question. And, and children, listen to me. Um, Jesus, Jesus Christ and Christianity, really, um, they don't have a problem with happiness. Okay? So many people think that if you're going to follow Jesus, you have to uh, put an end to all your happiness and all your laughter. And, and that's absolutely not true. We just need to be happy in the Lord. We need to be joyful in the Lord. Because here's what you're going to find. That everything that you think in this world that will make you happy, it will not make you happy. Maybe for just a little while. But then it goes away. But Jesus Christ will make you happy. Not only today or tomorrow, not only for the rest of your life, but throughout all of eternity, He has the power and He alone to make you happy. Now, I've written something down here that's very important, kind of funny, but it's very important. And I say, all intelligent people should have a good reason for doing what they're doing. Don't you think that? I mean, uh, if you're... If you're pretty intelligent, if you're pretty smart, um, you ought to have a reason for whatever you're doing. Let me give you an example. We would not think it very reasonable if somebody went to a store uh, and they didn't know why. For example, let's say that you were with your dad or your mom and you were walking through a store and you saw this person just standing there in the middle of the aisle. And they looked kind of confused and, and your dad walked up to them and said, uh, excuse me, can I help you? Uh, why are you here in the store? And the person says, I don't know why I'm here in the store. You would think that was kind of strange, wouldn't you? Or let's look at another illustration. We wouldn't think it was smart if someone was standing in the rain for no reason at all. Let's say it started raining while you were in the store and as you walked out into the parking lot and your dad put up his umbrella, you noticed there was someone just standing out in the middle of the parking lot and just getting wet. You walked up to him and said, why are you standing here? And he says, I don't know. I, I don't have a reason. I'm just here. You would think that's kind of strange. Someone doesn't stand in a bathtub, sit down in it and run water unless they have a reason for doing so. They want to take a bath. In everything that we do, we have a reason for it. Well, shouldn't we have a reason for why we are alive. Shouldn't we have, I mean, a good reason, not just any reason, <laughs> you know. You should have a good reason. What is that reason? And we need to ask ourselves certain questions. And this is where we're going to end. I just want to give you these questions to think about. Why do I exist? Why? Am I just... I got here by chance. There's no reason in my life. Nothing to live for. I'm just an animal who's going to live and die. Why do I exist? Then secondly, what is the purpose of my existence? I mean, what should I be doing with my life? Okay? What is the purpose of my existence? And the third question, what should I be doing with my life? Now, these are questions, children, that you need to answer. And you need to realize that many adults, many adults, never answer these questions. Can you believe that? I mean, they live their whole life and they don't even know why they exist. They live their whole life and they don't even know what they should be doing. You don't want to be like that, do you? You want to have a reason. Well, we're going to talk about that reason in the upcoming studies, but here's what I want you to see. Whatever you are to do in this life, I don't know if you're to be a preacher or a missionary or a carpenter or a doctor or a janitor. I don't know what you're supposed to do, but I know this. Whatever you do, you are to do it for God's glory, for God's praise, and to bring God pleasure. And in doing that, I can assure you that you will bring pleasure to yourself. All right, well, let's, let's close this study with some prayer. Father, I pray for these children, for all who are listening, and I pray that you would bless them and strengthen them. I pray most of all that they would know Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord, that they would submit to Him and honor Him 
and obey His Word and that they would know His presence and His power and His life, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. Protect them all, Father, from evil and evil men and do Your work in their lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right. Well, have a great day. Please visit our website at heartcrymissionary.com. There you will find information about the ministry, our purpose, beliefs and methodologies, and extensive information about the missionaries we are privileged to serve.